Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Magnet Monday. We are live. And it's a beautiful Monday because today we're going to talk all things lending. And we have so many special guests with us today. Erica, how are you? First of all, I'm doing fantastic. Good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, and happy Monday to all. Yeah, that's great to hear. And thank you, everyone that are joining us today. Um, first things first, want to go around and have our guests introduce themselves so that way, you know, our audience can get to know you. You, some of you have been here before, but for the ones that, you know, are just watching our Magnet Monday for the first time, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Ruben, you can start first. Hi, good afternoon. I'm uh, Ruben Garcia with uh, Novus Home Mortgage. I've been in the uh, field since 1993, um, so I've done a, a few loans here and there. Nice to be here, uh, by the way, Erica. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we're very, uh, very happy uh, to, to be here and share whatever we can to, to help out our, our audience. Thank you so much, Ruben. And uh, Ray, if you can introduce yourself. I won't know we had you before here, so please introduce yourself to the group. Hey, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Palacios. I'm the uh, CEO of First Origin Mortgage Lenders. Uh, and I guess 1993 was a good year because that's when I started too. So uh, it, it, it brought in a, a, a few good people. <laughs> How awesome is that? Jose, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, hello everyone. This is Jose Mata. I'm branch manager for Point Mortgage Doral. I'm one of the newbies. I started in 2006. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's been great. This, this career has been amazing. So we are going through changes and this is what we have the professionals here like Ruben Ray, you know, you know, taking charge. So, so thank you everyone. Thank you well, thank so you. much for having us. Um, it, it's a pleasure to have you guys today. I know that we said we we're going to have Charlie and Danny. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today. Something came up at two and they couldn't be here, but I know that we have veterans, uh, with us today and with that said we're going to start our show and these questions that, um, that pretty much we're going to ask you is questions that the realtors are asking um right now right with the borrowers everybody who's applying for mortgages this is one of the top questions that the borrowers the clients are asking themselves so we're going to start and you have each one of you guys have the opportunity to answer all of them because i know you all have different mindset um in this topic so one of the first questions that people are asking us is now we have a new market right we're seeing it so how high are the interest rates going? That's the first question that everybody's asking us. So you guys can go ahead and start sharing your thoughts. We can we can start with you, Jose. Okay, well, well that's the question that we get every day, right? And uh, how high the interest rate will go. I mean, yes. we don't have a, a, a magic ball to say that because obviously rates have gone up, you know, daily, weekly. So right now, I know we're close to the sevens, but... Is it going to continue going higher? It all depends on the how can the Fed manage the inflation, which is causing the, the interest rate to go up. Uh, but I, it's temporary. It's not going to continue, in my opinion, continue going higher. You know, it all depends, you know, the, the next report. But uh, even like this, you know, we're still originating and, and helping the buyers and, and, and giving them the roadmap for them to buy a home because right now the rental market is even higher. So... So it all depends, you know, rates could stay the same. I, I hear that they're gonna go down it, it, it comes recession that they're talking about, but we don't know exactly how, how they're gonna go. So my opinion. Great. That is so Great. true. Um, that's one of the, the yeah. things that, you know, we always tell people like, okay, you're renting and because they're afraid of the interest rate, but renting is always, you know, more expensive. But go ahead and Ray, give us your opinion on the matter. <laughs> Well, if you uh, if you listen to the, the the smart people that look at this every single day, I, I guess they're expecting it to reach the eights um, right. sometime in in first or second quarter of 2023. A, whether it gets there or or it goes even higher, I, I I my opinion is I doubt the economy can take anything higher than that um, for a long period of time. I would say. I mean, even right now we're seeing in the sevens that it, it, it's, a, it's a little, it's going to stagnate the economy a little bit potentially within the next six to nine months. Um, so that they're going to definitely get to a point where they're going to start seeing unemployment to, uh, going up. Um, and the only reason it's not going up now is because there's so many open jobs. 
But once they do start seeing that unemployment level going up, that's when we're, we're going to more or less get a, a better estimate as to how high they're going. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Ruben, what say you? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, that we've kind of seen the worst of what we're going to get. There might be some slight variations in the markets with, you know, depending on the financial news that come out that particular day, we may see some sways here and there. Uh, the last few uh, sways that we've seen in the market have uh, come back pretty quickly. Uh, the market has recouped. So I think that we're pretty much in the worst of it right now, in the thick of it, as far as, uh, as the rates go. Um, next year now, there's going to be um, obviously a, a lot of things to see uh, as far as rates coming back down, they will eventually come down. Now, let's be clear, I don't think that we're gonna see threes and fours again, okay? When, when the rates settle, they're gonna be in the mid fives in my personal belief, maybe higher fives, and that's gonna be our market for, for years to come. So I think, uh, I think we've seen the worst of it. Now we just gotta bear through it and, and, and hunker down and, and, and also keep something in mind, guys. There is nothing any of us can do about interest rates, nothing. So basically, you know, most people have credit cards at 25, 26%. Okay. And then we're talking about a mortgage rate of seven uh, and put it in, and, 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 you know, it, it just, it's not a, it's not a major thing. Okay. It's not a major thing. We just got to get over this hurdle and, and then we can always refinance. Exactly. That, that's one of the things, you know, I've thought about like, well, if, you are ready to buy because people usually think like, well, the rates are not right or the price, the market price is not right. But I think that it, you buy when you're ready. Like when you are personally ready, doesn't matter the numbers. And then, like you said, if, you know, in the future, then rates com do come down, like you can al always refinance. Well, the, 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 what's the alternative to buying guys? Right. What's the alternative? Well, we're going right. to rent and we're probably going to pay more in rent than we are going to pay for a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And also, okay, so so what's the positive now? What are the positives? The positives is that now borrowers can have a better opportunity of getting that offer accepted where they did four or five months ago. Um, they're buying it to, in today's dollar, not not a year and a half from now, where 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 values values in Miami are going to continue to go up. By the way, they're not going to come down here. We have too much demand from exterior, uh, foreign national borrowers, from domestic borrowers, from people from New York, California. We have a lot of demand in, in this state in particular, and particularly in Miami. It, it's a huge, huge demand. So if people are sitting on the fence waiting for values to drop, uh, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I remember when I first my I bought my first property, it was in 2008. It was super high and a 7% interest rate. When people ask me, oh my God, 3.5% interest rate, I'm like, well, I've never seen those. You know, 3.5%, that's pretty much like if you're going and buying a car. I've never seen that in my 20 years of experience. So I know that I started when I was 10. Now. I'm sitting to the veterans here today. <laughs> well, I mean, to, to put this in retrospect, if, if you purchased a year ago or two years ago, even at the 3% rate, but you were paying $50,000 above appraised value, you, you were pretty much fi funding or financing a higher rate, you know, in, in itself. Uh, rate. Never the, thought of that. And the value of the home itself. So it, it's, it's one of those give or takes, you know? Yeah. Right. Wow. Makes complete sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, one of the questions that people continuously ask is, is the market going to crash? Like, you know, because we are afraid of everything that's happening. Like you said, Ray, unemployment rates are going to go up. Like everything is happening. Th rates are coming up. Like, is the market going to crash? Well, I'll tell you, uh, we were in a meeting down in, um, in Key West. Um, there was a, a realtor event down there. Um, I, I want to say two months ago where their head economist was down there speaking. And he was talking about the, the numbers that he has is, Right now, we're dealing with the largest generation of people coming of buying age, um, which, I, which I believe is Gen Z or whatever this last generation is, mm -hmm. that they are now in that almost 30 years old to, you know, or 26 to 35 year age where they're purchasing. Uh, and then on top of that, people are getting, are living longer. They're getting older. They're retiring. They're not moving away or anything like that. So they're staying in their house. So their kids need to go somewhere. Um, so cooped with that, that there, there's a lot of buying power out there. There are a lot of buyers, a lot more buyers than there are sellers. 
and uh, and just 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 because of the generation alone, it's the largest generation we've ever had coming of age of buying age for residences. Yeah, absolutely. So no, like, absolutely. I, I guess my my answer is no. The market's not going to crash like like yeah. 2007, yeah. 2008. Um, where uh, those were the toughest years of my life, you know, and that, that, that's when Jose came in. So that, that, that that's when, where I started. The, the 90s were easy compared to 06 to uh, 2011. That's when I started yeah. losing hair. Um, <laughs> but you, 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 we won't see anything like that where house, houses will decline 40, 50, 60 no. percent. Uh, you might see some decline, but it, it's, it, you know, statistically speaking, it's not going to be that drastic. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Ray. I mean, the, the demand that we have now, it's not just only for first home home buyers. We also have, like Ruben said, foreign nationals. Uh, we have, you know, Colombians are coming, you know, trying to buy more real estate, Brazil, you know, Peru. So we've seen investors taking opportunities. Because this is the market we have the more product. We've seen more loan products now than ever from the ninth one market from the even conventions, FHA, down payment assistance. So there are plenty of, of mortgage programs that you can help. You can, dedicate, you can have a niche. I mean, I know I know a lot of investors that are buying commercial, residential. They, they have the new loan for 91 that you have no documentation on taxes. So self-employed. So there's it's always going to be a demand. Yeah, the property value had gone up as well. So a market crash, no, because we have equity. We have appreciation. Mm -hmm. that have been accumulated from the past five years yeah. or more. So to go into a crash, no, because we're not leveraged out. You know, people are buying cash, giving higher down payments. We've seen buyers coming from New York, California, Texas. So there's, I mean, South Florida just is it, you know, Miami Day, Broward, Palm Beach. So we're going to continue our demand strong. So I don't see a market crash, no. Ruben, what do you think? Like, um, I mean, Even the rates go up a little bit more. We <laughs> we're talking about all of all of this, um, you know, opportunities that we have here in South Florida, and it, it is one of the things that it's been a constant topic in all of our sessions. Like, Florida's not going anywhere. You know, th this is a great market. What do you think? I mean, I, I truly believe that there there are going to be uh, declining markets, but not here. There are going to be Arizona, for example that's going to be a declining market and it's going to go down a bit. It's not going to be a crash of any sort. You know, we got to put things in perspective, 2007, 2008, let's be honest, if had the banks not stopped lending, that, that party would have still gone on for more years. Right. But bottom line, the, you know, the, the party ended where, where, you know, 100% financing, no income, no asset, no employment verification, that just wasn't sustainable. You know, you had negative amortization loans, you know, that's it's just not sustainable. In today's marketplace, people are coming in with down payments. We are verifying income. We are verifying assets, employment, the whole nine yards. So most people currently stand in their homes with a lot of equity. We, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of appreciation the last few years. So a market crash, no, I, I, I don't see that uh, in any shape or form. There may be areas in, in our market that may adjust slightly in price because they went up too, too much to begin with originally. So there right. might be a slight adjustment. We're not going to see the same levels of appreciation that we've seen year after year that we've been accustomed to because, again, guys, that's not sustainable. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that the bottom line is we just need to keep our, our heads clear. We need to be focused on the target. And the target is that when is a good time to buy? It is always a good time to buy. It is always a good time to buy because what is the alternative? Again, guys, nobody lives for free unless you do. And, and, and let me know what the secret is. But at the, at the, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's got to pay rent and rents are going to continue to increase. That's that's for sure. Right. I think uh, you guys answered two of the questions that we had and people ask us. One was, are rates going to ever go down? You answered, I think you all agree that we're barely going to see the threes and, and fours for a while. I mean, I think you guys answered that. And also, um, when he said, you know, if rates are going down, we answered that one. And is it a good time to buy? Do you all agree that it's always a good time to buy? I know we have also, guys, if you're listening right now in Facebook Live, send us the questions. I'm looking at our Facebook Live as well. We have a question here, and um, I'm going to read it to you guys so you can answer these questions. Is, is the government is raising interest rates? property taxes and controlling rents 
that makes the prices of our real estate drop because it is no longer attractive. With real estate prices drop with this situation, especially for residential. I think you guys answered that, but if you want to put another input on that, um, any of you will be great. Right. So basically he's asking like it will the um rest like will the prices drop on residential properties? Well, I, I've seen we've seen already prices adjusted going down. Right. Because remember the last two years, sellers were you no know, selling their property overpriced. So people were giving 30, 40,000, 50,000 over over you know, the purchase price, price value. And that made the market difficult because you know, they were getting the offers, they were getting accepted. So we've seen price that adjusted. Obviously, the rate's gone up. So we're not going to see that crazy that people are going to overpay for a home. They're going to be, you know, they've been adjusting to the real market value. So it gives an opportunity to more buyers to come in and be able to buy this home that they're looking for. Get There is demand. So we're just going to see this, you know, this pricing adjustment because of the rates. And sellers are going to realize that they have to sell their homes at the real market value, because that's obviously, if we don't sell, they're not, they're not gonna get their money by another house. So they need to be realistic. And I think we're coming to a landing to that. So, you know, we're gonna see more demand and more supply moving forward in the future. I see it. Yeah, I think so too. And honestly, I feel like we have to understand that what we saw in the last two years was something completely different, mm -hmm. something that it's not the norm. And obviously prices changed, rates went down, prices went up because there was a, a really big demand uh, of, you know, like properties and all of that. So if you didn't sell in the last two years for double the the worth of your house, it's not going to happen again. So that, basically that's what we're saying. Exactly. You have, yeah. you, have to exactly. take advantage of that but if you didn't then you know you have to, to, to how the market is right now to add to that i mean unfortunately the property taxes follow values of homes so uh you know values go up taxes go up and and traditionally speaking over the last you know 50 100 years they have gone up the only time they actually went down is after the 08 crash which is when the valuations of all these uh, all the properties across the board went way down, where you had a four hundred thousand dollar house go down to under two hundred thousand. Um, that's the only time you ever saw a decline of of uh, property taxes, but they traditionally do go up, um, unfortunately. And 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 now with the hurricanes, insurances will go up. The yeah. good thing is that shock from the three percent to seven percent rates is past us already uh the media is out there talking about it everybody knows about it uh so so that initial shock is past us if, if you get a pre-approval today for what you qualify for that is going to be realistic if you had a pre-approval from a year or two ago with with a two percent interest rate that wasn't very realistic um mm -hmm. so so what what you're qualifying for today is what you're really qualifying for you know going forward for the next few years nice right and you know one other question that you know keeps coming up is like well since the market is adjusting to the norm can people now offer less of what the price you know what people are pricing their houses now like is that a good technique or are we still like in bidding wars like what's happening um from what i've seen i i still don't think it's a healthy market i think there's a the, the inventory out there is about four months or three and a half to four months worth of property uh, a healthy market is at six months, so we're not there yet to be offering, you know, to be lowballing people. But I mean, listen, you know, I I, I tell people all the time, you it, it doesn't hurt to try, and it doesn't cost you anything to try. Um, what I have seen lately is a lot more seller contribution, though, where you know mm -hmm. now the seller is giving, you know, you're, you're getting appraised value, but you're getting five or ten thousand dollars seller contribution, and then you can use that five or ten thousand to buy down your interest rate as well. So that that I have seen more and more. Right. We have, we have, you know, one, that was one of our questions too, because it looks like that's, that's yeah. what's coming into. I remember like some, so many things happened in the last two years that, because everything was like, okay, we're, we're going, we're rolling with it, right? Like the flow was like, this is what's happening. So let's make these changes and all of that. But be, I, I remember that when love letters were a thing, like to, to want to win, you know, like a bid, a bid in on a house or something like that. So now, um, because 
it is no longer a seller's market because really it, it is not. I see sellers more motivated to help the buyers like, you know, close the deal. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, Ruben, do you have, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, pretty much properties are, are lasting a little longer in the market than, than, than usual. We are still not in a seller's market, at least a million and below. We're still in, in, in uh, I mean, we're still in a, in a seller's market, I meant to say. We're not in a buyer's market currently, uh, a million and below. But obviously, it's like anything else in life. If you're a seller that you can stand and sit and wait uh, four months, five months to sell your property, then chances are you're going to get what you're asking for it. If you're not and you're one of these people that are obviously needing to sell for a specific reason and you need to move and you need to uh, go elsewhere, then you're going to be more incentivized, more motivated to negotiate. And, and again, I employ all the real estate professionals out there now, your best bet when negotiating with these contracts and these sellers and these listing agents is negotiate closing cost and points for your clients. Don't negotiate the price because the price, if you drop down $10,000 in purchase price versus dropping down a quarter percent in rate, that's going to be more significant for your borrower than, than, than the $10,000 drop. So, so it's important to keep that in mind, um, you know, Focus on, on that and, and getting that borrower qualified. And, and as Jose mentioned earlier, there's a ton of products out there now. There's a lot of programs and products. And, and keep in mind, when rates come up, who had heard of a buy-down in the last eight years? Nobody. Buy-downs weren't being used. Now we have the 2-1. Soon we're going to have the 3-2-1 buy-down. So basically, the industry adapts and does things to help people mm -hmm. qualify for uh, for these properties, even at, 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 at the, by the way, I'm not going to say higher rates, the rates are higher, but guys, let's be honest. These are normal rates. These are normal, healthy rates yeah, it for is. the mortgage market. These, this is not something that, oh my God, the rates are so high. Yeah. Compared to 3%, where it's not normal after COVID, exactly. mm -hmm. but now guys, we, 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 we got to smell the roses and be realistic. Now we have to be sharp with our comps when we do our comps, we have to be sharp when we're listing our properties. If we want these properties to sell, we need to be very honest with our sellers. You know, it, it's 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 a market where now we got to work again and work a lot. Yes. Okay. So, so true. So that, I'm always been working. What but, am but, I doing by now? The way, there's opportunity and there's always money to be made. It's just, you know, again, my advice again is just take away whatever we can't do anything about. And we can't do anything about the Fed raising rates. It's not in our control. So that that's just take that away and focus on the rest. And it will work out. So good. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I know we had the question that if lenders can help with uh, down payment assistance programs, um, you guys said yes. And I'm seeing that allowed right now. Everybody's like, you know, ask sellers for uh, buy down rates. Obviously, you mentioned you mentioned about it already. Also, a line of credit. Can they use a line of credit? to buy another property or do we encourage customers to do that? Well, the, the, the simple answer is yes, they, they can use a line of credit to, to purchase a property or, or for use of down payment. Um, and, and, and actually in, in this day and age, it's probably recommended because they, uh, I'm assuming they're gonna have a, a, a property probably with a three or four or 5% interest rate on a first mortgage that you might not want to refinance into a higher rate. So yes, a, a HELOC would be encouraged on something like that. And then when rates come down in two, three years, then at that point, you could just refinance the HELOC and, and the, uh, the current property well, once it's valued a little bit more um, into a lower rate combined. So yeah, I'm, we're seeing more that, more of that now because obviously the, when they purchased their first home, the rate was like, you know, 3% or, or three and a half. So they don't want to touch that rate unless they need to. Uh, so yeah, we're seeing more people applying for lines of credit. So you can you can use it for investment homes or or pay off debt. You know to use it to anything because they have appreciation, they have equity. So so yes, we've seen that's the next wave. We're seeing now you know you know equity lines of credit to be able to invest because obviously if you purchased a home a couple of years ago, you have a good amount of appreciation there to be able to get a lot of credit. So we're seeing more 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 people originating for lines of credit. So it's good, yeah. Okay, so um, one of the questions that we have, do we, um, is it recommended to waive appraisals or to actually do them right now? 
feel feel free to jump in, any one of you. I think, I think Ruben. Well, pretty <laughs> much, uh, I, I don't recommend anybody waiving an appraisal. Uh, I, I that, that's the protection of your of your cash, your money. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, we're not in a market to do that now. I think uh, uh, you know we're not seeing uh, an appraisal issue yet. Uh, we're still properties are coming in at appraised value, and in some cases a little higher than than, than appraised value. So I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't advise a customer of mine to waive their appraisal uh, to 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 get a contract. It just uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't make financial sense to me. Actually, it hasn't never made financial sense to me to do that. Right, because okay, so. usually, like I, I've seen, like people um, bidding for a property, they're like no contingencies, you know, like just let's just close whatever, whatever, so that they can win the bid. But honestly, it's like you said, you, it's something that's going to protect your investment, and it's not, it's not just, it's not smart to waive it. I don't, I'm not seeing that anymore. I mean, the past, probably the past couple of years, yes, because it was a crazy market demand. People were lined up outside to even right. an open house. It was like a big crowd. So yes, yeah, so you had the fear of, 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 you know, what's the FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. So yeah, there was a lot of, you know, fear that, oh, I'm going to miss out on these homes. So I'm going to waive appraisal. I'm going to waive inspections. I'm going to go over appraised value. Are we seeing that now? I haven't seen it anymore. I actually have listing agents calling us now to see if they have buyers to connect with the listings because we see in the shift that it's not as crazy. So waiving appraisal, I never agree to it either. I'm not a fan of that, but we've seen buyers doing appraisals and coming to value that we've been said. So there's no need to waive appraisal or inspections. Yeah. I, wow, I agree that's... with Jose and Ruben. So yeah. I used to cringe for the last couple of years every time I saw a contract with a, an appraisal <laughs> waiver on it. Oof, it's bad. <laughs> not worth it. It's not worth it. No, 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 it's not. So we have another question here in the chat. It says, would it be an option for lenders to start financing with 90 to 95% LTV for condos to allow customers to purchase apartments as an alternative if they are unable to purchase homes? Well, lenders, we can finance condos with, with 97, 95, and 90%. Now, the issue comes that these are going to be considered for review, Fannie Mae for review uh, 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 condos. So as long as the condo is healthy enough to get financed at 97, 95, or whatnot, yes, we can do that all day long. There's no issue with it. Now, the truth of the matter is that we have a lot of associations in our local market that um, have not been very healthy. Um, the way that the condos have been, have been handled and managed according to the condo questionnaires that we get back, the budgets that we get back, even in some cases, they, some of these properties may not have sufficient insurance coverages. So those are the challenges that we're facing. The reality is the financing does exist for 3%, 5%, 10%, whatever financing for condos, it's there. It's, it's already there. Now, we, we, we have to do our due diligence up front to make sure that these condos are, are financeable. Uh, uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of things that we can do up front before we go out there and show a, a client property and all that and even show the, a client uh, a specific unit. There's a lot of legwork that can be done ahead of time um, to, to, to accomplish this, by the way. Yeah, and, and I'm sure Ruben and Jose will uh, will back me up on this. And, and we've been seeing more and more condos being eligible for that 97 and 95 financing, little by little. I mean, it, you know, it hasn't been anything drastic, but uh, I mean, every year I get a handful of extra condos that we can do conventional financing on, and and that that is helping for sure. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree too. I mean, we see more more condos getting approved eligible because the associations know and they're putting the pressure that they have to do the repairs because we're not we're looking for budget condo questionnaires. We're looking for you know anything now to make that that condo be approved and eligible, and for the buyers to come in. And remember, some of them have this assessment that the the payment makes it higher for the for the buyers to qualify it as well. So we want to make sure what type of assessment they have. If for the 40 year rectification, what type of repairs are they going to do? So we, we have to qualify the condo and the bar at the same time. Right. And, um, you know, I 
always hear people say um, there's not enough inventory and all of that, but there's a lot of new construction. Like, is that, how does that work? Because there's so much new construction and why is it not enough inventory? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's the lack of inventory on the new construction. It's the, they're so priced or sort of so overpriced based on, and I have no idea what, but, and I don't know how they make their market. Um, but I mean, you got a townhouse that is a new construction in one area, let's say in, in Kendall, uh, that's selling for 500,000. Whereas across the street, you might have a, this, a similar townhouse that's 20 years old, that's selling for 380 or, or, or 420. Uh, that, that, that's where it's not, I don't think it's about um, inventory. It's more about, you know, what decision is right, you know, and, and how much are you willing to pay for something brand new versus something a, li a little bit used, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. I prefer, I don't know, that's just me. I prefer new construction. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, with, with new construction, you're always going to have the developer creates their own market, their own price. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. the community. That's how it is. It's, 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 but again, if, if you're, you're, you're like Ray was saying, yeah, you can go across the street and get, get a, a, a townhouse that may be 20 years older. But again, it, it depends on, on, on obviously the consumer, what they put value on. Maybe you want somebody that says, you know what, I'll pay that extra hundred grand. And I know I'm not going to have to worry about anything for a while. My insurance is going to also be cheaper because the property's built yeah. with the new codes, uh, right. new roof and all that. And, 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 and that may be a benefit to some people, yet others will say, no way, I'm not going to pay uh, more money for, for less square footage. I'm going to stay here and I'll pay the higher insurance. I don't care. But, um, but it just... It's it's it depends on the flavor of of, of the person. I would exactly. say it depends on, on what they what their preference is. But we do we do have uh, some inventory. Something also that to to take note of, guys. Keep in mind that in the eighties, Kendall was homestead. Don't forget. Right. That. So people are always saying, "Oh, moving south, moving south." Um, Kendall was homestead in the eighties, and and uh, and I believe that that. Uh, Homestead has is, is experienced a lot of growth. Uh, I'm sure you're all you've heard of the billion dollar project coming into Southland Mall, that's uh, going to develop that area. That that's going to be very impactful for for that area, and that's an yeah. area to, to keep your eye on. Mm -hmm. yeah, even even Florida City is I think it's going to be the new Homestead. They're doing a lot, they're doing a lot of more new construction. And, you know they're they're building, and like yeah. Ruben said, I mean yes, it, you know areas are growing already. Cutler Bay. Palmetto Bay, you know, I mean, there's there so many construction there that it's populated already. People are buying, people want to have, they want to own a home, bottom line. Correct. You know, they're tired of renting. They know that, you know, every time you're doing your rent, the landlord is going to increase your rent. So, yeah. you know, and that could be 100% more that you have to pay. So how much are you willing to pay? Are you willing to buy or are you willing, are you willing to rent and pay more? So like, Right now, I'm hearing, I'm listening to this saying now on social media. It's uh, uh you marry the home and you date the rate. So that's, that's what I wrote. Saying now, so and I agree. I mean, you absolutely. Just, you know, listen, just refinance the following year, but get into a home now. Become a homeowner. If you don't, then you're gonna miss out on appreciation. Become a homeowner, learn, and, and later on become an investor. You know, yeah. so there's plenty of opportunity to be homeowners. And the, the rent, if you have to rent, fine, but don't rent for the rest of your life. Become a homeowner. Amen. Right. And honestly, I feel like that's something that we should tell the people that are um, interested in buying. Like, what can they do now to prepare to buy? Because some people are ready, but some people are not ready yet. They'll be ready in two years. Like, what can they do now to, you know, have the, the success that they need when the opportunity comes? They need to get pre-approved, pre-qualified. <laughs> and say, seriously, uh, I'm sure Ray and Jose will 100% agree with this. A lot of people sometimes with minor things can qualify for a property, with minor right. things. The thing is that they listen to their neighbor, their best friend, the guy across the street, and, you know, they don't go to, they don't go to the experts. They don't go to the professionals. It's just like, you know, when, when, when you have a bad tooth, you're going to go to the dentist. You're not going to go to the guy that mows the lawn. Correct. So, so pretty much the first thing is to do an assessment of their financial situation and then to see where they need to be and what adjustments they need to make and in what time frame that needs to be done. And then they can, they can get ready to, to also be homeowners. 
And, and you know, it's just, it's something that sometimes the most minute changes, the most little things can make the biggest differences. Absolutely. You know, I'm always um, posting in social media and, and always targeting people and letting them know what they should do or what they shouldn't do. Um, and credit, like the simplest thing, not looking at their credit. That is like so important. Um, you know, I love to see Rafael today joining us <laughs> from our Nara Familia. I love that we see our veterans uh, in the real estate industry. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah. Something that we are almost to the end, guys, and I appreciate you because every we're going to have this on YouTube. Um, you can share it later on. We love um, talking and, and Dera and I have been doing this for a while. So one of the things that, the last thing that I want to ask you guys is what do you think, what advice and what do you think we should do as an agent, as a, like number one as an agent, the other one as a lender, because I know a lot of lenders are asking themselves the same question. What should we do entering this new market? One advice that you can give us to enter this new market, which is moving forward, because we're going to have all the, we're going to ride this wave 2023, 2024, and you guys have been in the business for a long time. What advice can you give us? Oof. Um, well, first of all, team up with somebody that you're very, very comfortable with that's very knowledgeable and that's going to answer your phones. Uh, at, at eight o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, I, I would say is, is number one. Um, uh, we can, we, and, and we, we need to get those pre-approvals early enough to, to help your borrower out. Uh, and, and I know all of us lenders, Jose and Ruben included, we, we can pre-qualify somebody now, even if they're not ready right now, and they're going to be ready in three or four months, and we can do TBD locks, basically lock in today's rate uh, uh, for 90 days or 120 days uh, where, you know, whereas you don't have to go rate shopping in, in four months for the 8% rate, you can still get it at 6.75 or 7.0 uh, today. So that, that that's going to be very helpful. So somebody that's knowledgeable enough to, to help you do that kind of thing. Um, uh, new products that really aren't new products. These products have been around for a long, long time. We just haven't used them for a long time because they haven't been needed is something like a two for one buy down where if today's rate, your rate is 7.5% and you can prepay the interest rate to, to, uh, to better your approval. Um, so your first year's rate is actually gonna be 5.5%. And then the second year will be 6.5%. And then the third year will, will be you know back to the 7.5 where, where it would normally be. Uh, but you can use some of that seller contribution to buy down that rate on, on, on a two one buy down. Uh, and then, you know, year three, when it does get up to 7.5, maybe the <laughs> rates do come back down to that 5% rate, uh, you know, 5 to 6% uh, area, and then we'll refinance before it even gets to that point. Um, so, so that's another way, but it, it's just, it's mainly teaming up with the right people uh, more than anything else. Great advice. I agree. Jose? Jose? Oh, oh, oh so, 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 yeah. Yeah. so yeah, uh, I, I said I said I have a room. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, like Ray said, you have to, you know, obviously we work with a lot of real estate agents. That's our bread and butter, and our bloodlines in this business. That's mortgage lenders. I mean, I like teaching, I like educating, I like giving the agents the the tools. You know, you know, once we have an approval, what they have to do to so we can connect with the right buyer and the right seller. I mean, I like to call listing agents and and say, hey, you know, this is our buyer, and we're ready to go. But education for us is key you know and you have to be available you have to go back to the basics you know if you have to help an agent for an open house gotcha. work is open and or teach a class through zoom you know or go to the networking event not you have to be out there you know you know we love zoom i love it but you got to be out there and and yeah. and help the real estate agent new one seasoned agents that every market has the highs you know the highs and lows so you mm -hmm. have to adapt you have to shift but there's so many opportunity. I think Ruben said it. So many opportunity that you can create business. Not just the you know what worked two years ago. It's, I mean, it's not gonna work now. So go out there. You know, put the time, put the effort, and be optimistic. I'm not. I'm not a negative person. I've been in this business 15 years, and it worked. You gotta be positive. Create the opportunities, and you know, those agents. So because a lot of agents out there are negative. 
You have to, you yeah. know, give them the opportunity. What type of niche are they going to focus and, and help them, you know, give them the tools. Fantastic. Thank you, Jose, for that. Um, and now I, know, I left another veteran uh, for last, and that is Ruben. <laughs> um, pretty much as, as, as a lender uh, to survive this, uh, you need to have the tools and you need to have the knowledge. So in this business, we never stop learning. Um, there's products right. coming out all the time and we need to be on top of our game. We need to know our products and we need to know what we can and cannot do with each product, okay? And guys, there's tons of products. I mean, obviously there's non-QM, there's, I mean, tons of products. We have plenty, plenty of choices. So pretty much is keep yourself educated, keep yourself informed as, as to what's out there, what, what you have. And then secondly, if you're a real estate agent, you need to know your market. You need to know what's out there. You need to know your inventory. If there's new construction that you plan to, to, to sell, go by, see the community, visit the communities, know what's available, know what incentives are available, uh, price points. I mean, th that's super critical as, as, as a realtor nowadays. And of course, you know, you, you, need to, you need to have good partners. You need to have good title companies. You need to have good insurance people. Yes, absolutely. And you need to have, you need to have a, a, a good lender team. You, you need to have your tools and you need to have these things to survive this market. And if you think that you're going to continue to do what you did the last few years, selling a listing in three days, when all you did was just put it in the MLS and, oh my God, I did such a great job. No, you didn't. Yeah. The exactly. market sold it for you. Now yeah. you have to know how to do your comps. You need to know how to do this. You need, you need to educate yourself. You need to make yourself better. You can't stop. If you stop, you're not going to make it. You need yeah. to really go out there and, and then make sure you have a strong team supporting you. That's my I, advice to survive this temporary uh, uh, bump on the road. I love it. Thank you so much. Guys, I, I love this. Today has been so interactive. I'm getting questions and I love it. I love it. As you can see, people are actually paying attention and joining <laughs> Zoom and sending messages. So I love it. I am going to be a pest. I'm going to be in everybody's face doing more things so thank you guys for always saying yes to me and to data when we do these things i have another question is one of the many lenders say they cannot um lock a rate until the contract is signed is this true no no it's not true okay that's not true it, it's a it, it's what we call a right now a tbd uh lock so when we pre-approve the person we actually don't put in an actual address. We, we put the address as, as TBD to be determined. And that locks in the person's social security number with that interest rate instead of the, the social, you know, or that person and the property to the interest rate. So, so we, we can assign the property later. Oh, so good. Okay, guys. Fantastic. So honestly, I have learned so much today. I have one more question, Dana. Okay, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Go I have one more question that they messaged me um, on Facebook. This is another one um, because they said something. I don't know who was it um, that you guys said about buy downs mm -hmm. and they are a little confused. They don't know what a buy down is. So I don't know who was it. If you can um, talk about buy downs, uh, that's what they're well, asking me. Uh, normally buy downs is when you buy down the interest rate. So rule of thumb to just buy down a regular like the the entire interest rate if, if you're getting a 7.0 every eighth will cost you about half a point roughly um so if you want to go down to a six and a quarter you're going to be paying um half a per, uh but then one percent of the loan amount to go down a quarter of a percentage point on a two one buy down you actually will will pay the interest amount for the first year for two percent of the first year so that way your first year in that loan is going to be, if your rate is 7.0 right now, um, it's going to be 5.0 for year one. You will have to pay the difference of interest for that year ahead of time in your closing costs. Okay. And then year two will be a 6% uh, uh, fixed interest for that second year. And that, that difference in interest rate will also be paid in year one. So, so for instance, on a two one buy down for four hundred eighty thousand or five hundred thousand, might cost you about ten thousand dollars. But year one, you're going to be paying five percent, and year two, you're going to be paying six percent, and then year three, you'll be refinancing um, okay. to get yourself down to that five percent level. So that, that that that's where that's where the two one buy down is. A regular buy down rule of thumb is just half a point for, for every eighth. 
roughly. Okay. Does anybody else have another uh, something that they want to mention about this? Well, the the, the buy down just to keep it simple because it, it is complicated when 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 uh, the financial <laughs> guys explain notes. it. It's always you know we understand it, but the reality is you're just prepaying the interest prepaying. up front. Prepaying. Okay, so Got it. so bottom line, as Ray uh, explained, let's say you have a five, and then your end rate is going to be a seven. So the first year, whatever the difference is between that five and the seven. That's the first year of interest that's going to be paid. And then you calculate from the six to the seven what that difference is. And that's what's going to what, what you're going to have to prepay. And again, keep in mind, this has to be done by the seller. It can't be done by the borrower on the right. two one buy down or Got the three it. two one that's buy right. down and, and stuff like that. As far as buying down points, yes, you can. You can still do that, obviously. But it, bang for my buck, I think, and I don't know how you guys see it, Ray and Jose, I, if I was going to do that option now with the way the market is, I'd rather actually try to get a buy down and try to get contribution if, if we're able to do that. If not, then the, la you know, the last resort will be trying to, to buy down the rate, obviously. With yeah, the, I, the I think we're, we're in a market of, of that. Like we're saying that if we could get the seller to help the borrower to buy down, the temporary buy down the rate, that's, that's kind of like we call it. So, because we're going to refinance right after. So, you know, if the bar is going to pay for the point, it's going to. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Jose, your connection is getting a little interrupted. No, if, if, if I may add, a, a, if, if you ask me if, if I'm pro buy down, I am not pro buy down. <laughs> Sorry, Jose, your connection is <laughs> getting broken. I, I, I would I would rather keep that, you know, if, if I was a buyer in today's market, I'd rather keep the money in my pocket because and any buy down, if you do a straight buy down on any interest oh. rate, it's gonna cost you uh, and and you know, Fannie and Freddie have already priced these things out. They're they're not dumb, they've been doing this forever. Um, they're they're gonna price it at at least six to seven years worth of that interest rate buy down, and that's what you're gonna be prepaying. So you, you're not gonna be in this loan for the six or seven years. We, we're expecting you to be in this loan for three to three to four max. So it may not benefit you to buy anything down right now. Uh, right. You know, maybe on the two one, uh, uh, you know, de depending on what qualifications and, and all that stuff you have, but but a, a straight buy down, I, I, I'm not, I've never been a proponent of. So. Okay, I'm sorry, Jose. Jose, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me now? I hear you now, sorry. We, we kind of lost you in there oh okay okay no but I, I mean obviously the guy said it i mean the temporary buy down coming from the seller is the best way to do it we okay. call it a temporary buy down so uh it's it's the best way to do it now because otherwise if you do the regular buy down it's going to cost more to the buyer to get into the home like that so excellent thank, well, you, thank you so much yeah if, thank you so much i saw the funniest meme i've ever seen this weekend where uh and, and, and it was on mortgage memes on Instagram or something like that. But uh, uh, there was one one person was laughing, ha, 7% rates. I'm never going to pay that. And then the other person was laughing back at him saying rent is 100% rate. Oh, yeah, the right. cap. It, yeah, it the is 100% right. interest. You're, you're not yeah. getting any principal out of that. Absolutely. And, and thank you so much for putting that on layman terms for us because we need to know. We're, guys, sometimes like, it's the same thing with like um, down payment assistance. Like you end yes. up paying it. Like you end up paying that money. It's not free money given to you. Absolutely. So you Guys, to I want to wait. Uh, Dad, I'm going to interrupt you. I just wanted to say we have a realtor in the house. So congratulations. My Magnum Monty that Amir became a realtor. Nice. Yes, I just oh, wow. got a realtor before. Nice. You know? So I'm, I'm not only a marketing pro, I'm also a realtor. So thank you, Erica. Thank you so much. Well, honestly, I have learned too much today, to be honest with you. I think that I can relate to what all of you said about going straight to the source. And it, it's like you said, if you're sick, you go to the doctor. Don't Google it because it probably tell you that you have cancer. So go straight to the doctor, go straight to the professionals, let them pre-qualify you, let them tell you what you actually need to put into place so that you can make it happen. And like Ray said, you know, having the great, the good team is the best, best strategy. Thank you so much to each one of you for joining us today. This is going to be on YouTube. It has been so informative and we have learned so much. 
follow us at Magda Monday on Instagram so that you can get everyone's um, info and you can follow them as well and you can stay up to date of who's coming next week and we love you guys thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for the advice we truly appreciate it thank you so much thank you guys thank you so much. follow appreciate each that. other Those are Ruben. and Good continue you guys. learning care guys <laughs> to meet you thank ray you. Ruben. Bye, bye, guys. Guys. bye guys thank you for listening have a good one you too